Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning about arrays. An array is essentially a collection of objects. You can use an array to create, for example, a pattern of geometry. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about polar arrays. Let's begin by creating some geometry. I'll drop a circle about here. And let's create a second circle. Just snap to this quadrant. The second circle, I'll give a radius of 1.5 units. Now let's activate the Polar Array tool. First step is to select an object. Right click to finish the selection. Next, we specify the center point of the array. Let's awaken the center of my big circle, and we'll select it. We get a preview of the array, and we have a number of options in the ribbon that we can adjust. For example, we can change the angle between the array elements. As I hover over the center of the circle, you saw an arrow. I can just grab and drag it. As I move the mouse, notice that the distance between the array members changes. And when I left click, the value in this column changes as well. Let's take a look at a second option for editing. We can specify the number of items in the array. Let's snap to this quadrant. Now before I accept, I want to mention a few words about the two types of arrays, associative and non-associative. If you create what's called an associative array, as I have done here, I'll just click accept. What you do is create a single entity of all the items, like a block. So now my array will behave as one single entity, just like a block. And if I create a non-associative array, each member of the array behaves as a unique or independent entity. OK, let's take a look at some more of the editing options for the array. Here we can specify the number of items, let's say 7. Tab the angle between items, let's make it 29 degrees. Tab. Essentially, that's the total angle of the array. Let's make it 270 degrees. Tab to register. Number of rows, make it 2. Tab. Specify the row spacing, let's say 3 units. Tab to register. And number of levels, 3. Tab. This doesn't seem to be much change in our graphic area, but let's take a look from a 3D perspective. We can also define the base point of the array. I'll snap to this quadrant. Let's take a moment to see why the base point is important. I'm going to close and then create a rectangle here. Now select the array. And let's replace one member of the array. First, we select the replacement object. Right click to finish the selection. Now we select the base point of the replacement object. Next, we select an item in the array to replace. We can also select multiple items to replace. Down here, we see that six objects are selected. It might look like I'm selecting the same object over and over, but in fact, if I orbit my model, you see that I've got three levels. When you're finished making your selection, right-click, Enter, and then Exit. We also have the option to edit the source. Next, I'll select an item in the array. Click OK. And let's exit the array, saving our changes, of course. This concludes our first tutorial about working with arrays, the polar array. In our next tutorial, we'll be learning about rectangular arrays.